Of all the pirates who terrorized the seas, Edward Teach, popularly known as Blackbeard, was the worst by far. Many of the great buccaneers had some redeeming quality. Henry Morgan, who ended up as Sir Henry, governor of Jamaica, always had a secret desire for respectability, and even the infamous Captain Kidd and occasional qualms over his piratical career. Nearly all of them were at least loyal to those who had served under them. But the Blackbeard was an evil-hearted monster, incapable of loyalty even to his own men. Teach was a Bristol man through and through who took to piracy at an early age by joining forces with a Major Bonnet who had abandoned an honest calling for the more attractive prospects of piracy. Hunting in couples they captured, burned, and plundered, preying on those unlucky merchantmen who were forced to sail along the routes where they mainly operated between Boston and the coast of Brazil. But if Bonnet was feared, Blackbeard struck horror into the hearts of those who were unlucky enough to see him boarding their ship, wearing a sling over his shoulder in which he carried no less than six pistols. He was an enormous man with a great black beard that almost covered his entire face. To make his appearance even more frightening, he carried matches and the tangle of hair under his hat, which he lit whenever he went into battle. It was hardly surprising that even his own men were frightened of him, and with good cause. On one occasion, while he was playing cards with some of his crew, he calmly produced two of his pistols and shot the men sitting on either side of him, remarking calmly that if he did not kill some of his crew every now and then, they were likely to forget who he was. At one point in his infamous career, he decided that his company had become too numerous because with so many men, each man's share of the plunder would be all the smaller. He therefore reduced the numbers by marooning 17 of his crew on a sandy island to starve to death. Fortunately, Major Bonnet, who does not seem to have been without some human feelings, rescued them. For months, Blackbeard had terrorized Charleston, the capital of Carolina, where his ruffians openly swaggered around the streets, coolly taking whatever they wanted, with no one to oppose them for the simple reason that the governor himself was receiving a share of Blackbeard's loot. But the time had now come when the respectable citizens could stand no more of it. Knowing that they could expect no help from the governor of Carolina, they approached the governor of Virginia and implored him to ask the captains of the British warships stationed in the James River if they would hunt down Blackbeard. It was decided to send two sloops after him under the command of the first lieutenant of the Pearl, Robert Maynard an officer of courage, resource, and experience. When the news was brought to Blackbeard that he was now an officially hunted man with a price on his head, he resolved to stand his ground in the Ocracoke Bay. Although he had only 25 men with him, as soon as Maynard was in range, Blackbeard gave him a broadside and then backed away. He had guns and Maynard had nothing but small arms, so the advantage lay with the buccaneer, or so he thought. As both Maynard's sloop and his supporting ship had no bulwarks, they were no more than a foot high from the water, and they were fully exposed to the pirate's fire. Blackbeard's next broadside completely disabled one of the sloops, leaving the onus of the engagement to fall upon the shoulders of Maynard, who had himself lost twenty men who lay dead or wounded on the decks of his own sloop. He was now in the position of being hopelessly outnumbered by Blackbeard's force, small though it was. His only chance lay in tempting Blackbeard into boarding his sloop. Maynard's plan was a bold one. He ordered all of his men who were armed with muskets to retire to the hold, while the others who were at the oars laid down quietly under cover. Maynard took his vessel close to the pirate ship. Seeing the sloop was now apparently unmanned, Blackbeard determined to board her and settle his score with her commander once and for all. First, by casting a number of grenades aboard the sloop, he sprang under the bows of Maynard's ship, closely followed by fourteen of his men. For a few seconds they were hidden from view by the smoke, but then it cleared to reveal the diabolical figure of Blackbeard, bristling with weapons and his band of cutthroats hot at his heels. It was at this point that Maynard gave the signal to his men who poured out of the hold to engage the boarders. Mouthing oaths, Blackbeard rushed at Maynard directly, and a savage duel ensued. After exchanging pistol shots, the two men drew their cutlasses and set about each other ferociously. 
Suddenly, Maynard found himself forced to retreat under an onslaught of blows, which broke his weapon in two. With a triumphant roar, Blackbeard moved in to cut Maynard down. But before he could do so, one of Maynard's men gave Blackbeard a cutlass blow in his neck. It was a stroke that would have downed any other man. But despite his terrible injury, Blackbeard continued to stand his ground, even laughing madly as he cut and slashed at anyone who came close, although he now had no fewer than 20 cutlass slashes and five pistol shots in his body. Any which of one would have proved fatal. Still somehow bellowing with fury, Blackbeard cocked his pistol and aimed it directly at Maynard's head. But before he could pull the trigger, he fell down dead, almost at Maynard's feet. The resistance of the pirates collapsed immediately. They surrendered meekly and allowed themselves to be herded below and locked into the hold. Only 14 of them had survived that ferocious engagement, and 13 of them were later hanged. Blackbeard the man died that day, but Blackbeard the legend was born. Would you like to know more about Edward Teach? Maybe hear about the search for his lost treasure, which we believe would be hundreds of millions of dollars now, and it's somewhere between Bimini and Ocracoke. If you would like to hear more of his life and madness, let me know in the comments. Give us a follow. Hmm?